we could go on and on, Dave. I, I was going to say to everybody, if we want to give uh, them, where did I get this information? Because you guys can all have it. This is all from, if you go to sydneypowell.com, mm -hmm. sydneypowell.com, I'll just spell it, S-I-D-N-E-Y-P-O-W-E-L-L.com. All of these motions with all of these uh, pieces of evidence are all there. Thank God Sydney puts it all out there. But I just thought if I read that um, conversation, that would kind of blow everybody's mind because that's a massive conversation that we got a hold of. So, yeah, here we are. <laughs> Fighting well, so, with everybody's help. So, so Barbara, I, I, I want to put General Flynn's words on the table, too, if it's possible. Yeah. And, yep. and he filed this declaration. Oh, um, yeah. uh, it was actually heart-wrenching reading it. Yeah. And I presented it on a YouTube presentation. But I, 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 I have a couple, and I want your reaction to a couple of the things he said. The date of that conversation between his previous attorneys at Covington and the prosecutors, Van Grack and the other... What date was that again? That's November 1st, 2017. That okay. story, that conversation that I mm -hmm. just read is um, uh, Mike and fled December 1st. December 1st, 2017. Now, these are his words from his declaration. Yeah. Ugh. On November 30th, 2017, the day before he signed the plea, here's what General Flynn wrote in his declaration. Still struggling with the decision whether to plead guilty, I asked my former attorneys, that's Covington, as you mentioned, Kellner, and this Anthony character, to make further inquiry with the special counsel's office prosecutors about whether the FBI agents believe that I had lied to them. In the preceding months leading up to this moment, I had read articles and heard rumors that the agents did not believe that I lied, something I also firmly believed. Mr. Keller and Mr. Anthony, his two attorneys from Covington, left the room Right. to call the special prosecutor's office prosecutors. Mm -hmm. When they returned, they informed my wife and me that they had been told that the, quote, agents stand by their statements, end quote, because I was then unaware that the agents had made the statements described in this declaration that he didn't lie. Yeah. And because I was unaware of what had passed between my former lawyers, Covington, and the special counsel's office outside the room, what you just related, I then understood them to be telling me that the FBI agents believed that I had lied. Yeah, My Covington attorneys counseled me to sign the statement of offense. Yeah, this is after they left the room and yeah. came and, 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 and was told, no, they, they believed that, no, he, he didn't lie. They told him they think he did lie. Yeah. And, and this is like what happened... On the Carter yeah. Page FISA application thing, yeah. okay, and, 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 and my count, and they said, "Hey, hey, hey, General, just just sign this, sign the guilty thing." Okay, yeah, I agreed to plead guilty that next day, December first, twenty seventeen, because of the intense pressure from the special counsel's office that you mentioned, which included a threat to indict my son Michael and the lack of crucial information from my counsel. The special counsel's office had already made Michael the subject of their investigation, taking all of his files and communications devices. At the time, Michael and his wife had a four-month-old baby. Nonetheless, I would not have pled guilty if my former lawyers had informed me that both agents who interviewed me at the White House on January 24, 2017, had advised that A, I displayed a, quote, sure demeanor, end quote, and B, quote, I did not give any indications of deception, end quote. Mm -hmm. And and C, both agents believe that that there was, quote, no indication that I was lying or that I believed I was lying, end quote. At no time before my plea did my former lawyers from Covington explain or disclose this to me. Had I been informed of these disclosures, I never would have pled guilty. Moreover, I would have expected my Covington counsel to refuse to allow me to plead guilty with that information at hand. I know. They let him plead guilty. Unbelievable. They knew he was. They, it's hard to even fathom that these, guys, that these lawyers would do this. So they were more afraid that the government thugs would go after the Farah filing than helping my brother, General Mike, um, 
uh, get his name cleared. I mean, they, they were going to create a perjury crime. They could, they could create it out of anything that he did, anything that he turned over. Now, as we mentioned, he went for another sentencing hearing a year later. Yeah. In, in, in December uh, 20, uh, 18, 2018. 18. Now, here's what he says about this. Prior to that sentencing hearing in December 2018, they counseled me that if the court were to ask me if I wanted to withdraw my plea, that I should say, quote, no, end quote, because, quote, the court would would be giving you the rope to hang yourself, end quote. Oh, yeah. Regretfully, yeah. I followed my lawyers. That's not Sydney. That's Covington again. That's I followed my lawyer's strong advice to confirm my plea, even though I it was all I could do to not cry out no, end quote, yeah. when this court asked me if I was guilty. That was the most horrible night of our yeah. lives that night, when, or that day and that night. And watching it, sitting there and watching it happen was the just a frightening moment because I feel like the judge was going to put him in jail for years. He had already caught, accused him of treason. Okay, so people say, well, why did he plead guilty again? Well, of course, his lawyers were useless, were a massive, colossal failure. They were going to protect themselves now that we know all of this before they were ever going to protect Mike. And, they, and Mike was so unprepared for that day, that December 18th, 2018, he thought he was going to walk in and it was going to be over. And remember again, this Mueller special counsel was still going on, so he was still going to protect his child, his son. Mm -hmm. You know, he's still young. Mike was still at risk, and um, and and so Covington didn't prepare him at all, and it was just a nightmare. We all went, we all left that day, and we actually went over to young Mike's house. Sydney, all of us, our old brothers and sisters, and we were furious. It was that was the moment when we were like these guys, Co Covington, and these guys. They have massively failed you. We knew in our hearts, as brothers and sisters, talking amongst ourselves, mm -hmm. something really bad was going on. They used to tell me not to tweet. Remember, they kept Mike quiet. They never made any statements for two years. They never said anything on his be behalf. You know, I think there was so much stuff about him being, you know, a Russian spy that they finally made some little paragraph statement. But I mean, they let mainstream media just rip him to shreds, the mainstream fake news media. So that particular day, December 18, 2018, we all went back and we were furious and we just, and Sydney was there. And we were, we were unloading amongst our set, like what we were going to do. And that's when, you know, Mike had to decide. And I, he didn't decide that night, but he knew this was it, that he's going to have to fight back. And, and there was no turning back. And thank God then Sydney came into our lives. Thank God. Whew. Well, another point, and Barb. The, the when, he, when General was, Mike pled guilty to that one count in, in December 1st of 2017, yeah. It's interesting because if you look back in some press reports, Covington was giving all these accolades by all these legal organizations right. oh, for yeah. for a, for bringing General Flynn I forward to plead guilty. They were being held up as these bastions of this great yeah. law firm and and yep. and providers of of legal justice because of well, they got General Flynn to plead yeah. guilty. They were yeah. given all these huge accolades, Barb. They were getting awards, oh, they yeah. were writing all these big um, articles about this high profile General Flynn case they had, and they were successful, and they're the best FARA filing law, international law firm in the country. They, they were taking care of themselves. They were going to give themselves all these awards, and they could care less about Mike and they filed the Farrah. They filed the Farrah form. They failed. You know, they failed him massively. And he didn't even need to file a Farrah form. That's the other part that drives me crazy too, because he wasn't working for any government of Turkey ever. A you know, he was working for a guy, a businessman who was from Turkey, a Turkish businessman. He didn't even live in Turkey, but he was it's all business. Like again, back to like Mercedes Benz, Toyota, I mean we work with international business people and actually it's just insane that um, Covington was giving themselves these big accolades 
the whole time they're trying to defend my brother, which was a horrible, massive failure. So we didn't know all these things. We just suspected it in our gut. We knew something was not right, especially my brother Joe and I, because they would get after us, because I was putting tweets out, and I was, you know, we were all fighting back in every way we could as brothers and sisters, and and um, saying, you know, what we knew, and we were asking for help. We were asking, you know, everybody, Tom Fenton, Devin Nunes, you know, Sean Hannity, these guys have helped us, Lou Dobbs, I mean, so many people, Last Refuge, um, Jeff Carlson, Epic Times, I mean, it, you, Dave, you know, like all these different wonderful people, thank God they just knew there was something, you know, wrong with this whole thing, and they looked into General Flynn's life, and they said, no way, this can't be true about this guy, this guy is like a stellar military hero, you know, and, and after... All you have to do is listen to some of his videos talking about the corruption, you know, especially his one at the RNC where he said, if I did one-tenth of what Hillary Clinton had done, I'd be in prison. And he's right. Mm -hmm. He was right the whole time. And it really put, took Trump right over the finish line. It was things like that, you know, the honesty. And that's why Trump is such a success, because we're hearing the truth every day. You know, so where anyway. we stand right now, Barb, is that on February 12th, uh, Van Grag okay. filed a response to uh, Sydney's motion about egregious government misconduct and yeah. and to toss everything out. And here, here's here, here's this is from Zero Hedge, and I want your take. Never mind all that FBI misconduct. End quote. Mueller attack dog Van Grag asked court to ignore the Flynn bid to toss the case. One of special counsel Robert Mueller's former prosecutors, Brandon Van, Van Grack, argued on February 12, 2020, in a filing, that the case against Michael Flynn should not be dismissed in light of, quote, egregious government misconduct, end quote, because the FBI's extensive FISA abuse uncovered by the Department of Justice Inspector General, quote, have no relevance to his statements to the FBI on January 24, 2017, end quote. Yeah, no, we, we now know Pienka lied on the FISA right. application. Right. So, so wait, so a couple things on that. P, 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 Pien, Pietenka, or however you want to say his name, yeah. in the IG report was singled out for gross misconduct. Right. Okay, This is the same guy who was sent in August of 2016 to get the lay of the land on Flynn, yes. and the same guy who interviewed him on 20, in January 24, 2017. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no one knows where he is. He's like invisible. Like yeah, you know, I, th I think he's out in San Francisco. Yeah, I, no one. But he's, you know, no one's ever interviewed him. Like, right. I mean, this is where Senator Graham. You know, he keeps talking all this uh, yeah. low hole stuff. He's going to interview all these FISA people, but he's not interviewing enough people. He should have done that months ago. You well, know? you know, in Texas, there's a so, saying: "All hat, no cattle." Yeah, I, and he's like, he's kind of acting like a guy with all hat, no cattle. Yeah, it's, right? it's very upsetting because, you know, he's he's on Maria's show all the time and he's always going to interview. He hasn't he interviewed talk, anybody else. He, talk, he talks a great game. Yeah, he right? hasn't done anything. It's, it, he can talk the talk. You, gotta, you, gotta, you know, Lindsay has to start walking the walk somewhere along right? the line. Right, because no one believes him anymore. Even yeah, Maria, right. she was furious the last time she had him on. She's like, so when do you, you keep saying you're going to interview and you're not interviewing, you know, he's like... Well, I'm going to interview Comey, and he brought up a few names. Yates, I think he, I heard, but where's the subpoena? Come on, Graham, get going. You know, we're all tired of it, you know? Anyway, yeah. Pienka is, this, Pienka is the man of the hour, you know? I mean, this is like, you know, where is this Pienka guy? He was the uh, supervisor of the Crossfire Hurricane spy ring. He went in. He, he monitored General Flynn and our president. I mean, you have to keep remembering, when he was monitoring General Flynn, he's also monitoring, monitoring uh, President uh, or Donald Trump at the time, candidate Trump's mannerisms too. People forget he wasn't just monitoring Mike's mannerisms and behavior. He was getting a good take on Donald Trump's mannerisms and behavior. So if Trump ever did come in, for any kind of conversation or what we call an interrogation now, 
they could have caught him in a perjury trap too. I mean, they could create a perjury trap trap for anybody. It's it's really ridiculous. You know? Well, they so, can, Barb. They yep. can. Now, Barb. Uh, yeah. One way people can get more information, they can follow you on on t- Twitter, Barbara yeah. Flynn Redgate. Yeah. They can follow Sydney Powell. They can go to Sydney Powell's website, sydneypowell.com, S I D N E Y Powell P O W E L L. And then, uh, then, then, we encourage folks. Look, this costs money, a lot of money, every month. And it's not just a defense of General Flynn on the line. It's a defense of every American and our freedom, our liberty, right, we can't, and the we Constitution. Can't, we can't let them get. We can't let them get General Mike Scout. That's what they want. If That's they right. get, if they get General Mike Scout, which they want desperately, the Mueller leftovers, the Russian hoax coup will never end. It'll go into the next four years yep. because then they could say the national security advisor was colluding with the Russians. I mean, it's insane what these people will do. They'll start spinning it up like crazy because they're, they're going to talk, of, of which they do still. I mean, it's insane. So, And folks can support General Flynn through the Mike Flynn, F-L-Y-N-N, defensefund.org. That's yeah. the defense fund. Yeah, thank God for that. That's how we've been able to survive and... I mean, we're working on a shoestring budget right now. So typically, just so people know, it's about $150,000 a month. And some months are busier than others. I wrote a check for $250,000 the other day. We've got about $430,000 left. Just so people know, I don't mind sharing that. But what happens is um, the media, the fake news wants to get a hold of that. And they wanna, they'll just turn it into something awful. So, and I don't like people, all the hardworking, we're, it's everyday hardworking Americans that have helped us. So I don't like to put pressure like on people, you know, just, you know, when you're thinking about General Mike, if you have, you know, an extra $5 and you think you can help, that would be great. But keep sending prayers because the prayers you know, mean as much as anything monetarily that we ever get. We've managed to, to, to keep fighting through this. But yeah, just so people know about roughly how much we, we I try to keep a running, uh, uh, running amount of about $300,000, you know, in the, in the account, in the Legal Defense Fund account. And uh, yeah, when it goes up, I know when I'm going to be paying another bill. And Sydney's so careful. I mean, look, she goes everywhere and, you know, everywhere to help us raise money. I mean, have you ever seen uh, uh, anything like Sydney? She's, you know, you know, Incredible. pushing uh, the Legal Defense Fund, and she is operating on a shoestring budget, too. I mean, it is like I have a niece who's a judge and her husband and brothers and sisters. We're, we're the investigative team. There's, you know, a few. I mean, we've got General Mike, of course, who is the best thing we could ever have helping us you know, through the digging up information, but um, you know, it is it is amazing that this family is doing this. And sometimes I go, "Holy smokes!" You know, I call my little townhouse out here in San Diego the bunker. You know, and it is. Here I was, a retired school teacher. You know, and I thought, "Wow!" But it's really our destiny, guys. And so, you know, I'm very proud of of what we're what we're push what we're how hard we're fighting. I'm I'm proud of that. You know, I don't I don't enjoy it, but I know we're doing everything in our power to fight back and we're doing great and because of everybody helping us and all the people that are uncovering all this incredible information, this Jesse Liu story that just came out. Of course, Jesse Liu was one of the lead uh, lead uh, attorneys prosecutors, from mm-hmm. prosecutors uh, working against Mike too. She signs all of Mike's all of the prosecuting government motions as well. Now she's been taken off this guy named Shay. She's been replaced by a guy, a gentleman named Shay, another uh, attorney general at the uh, DOJ. So Lou just got yanked from uh, another cushy job she was going to have with Treasury. I mean, she. If you look at what uh, the Last Refuge wrote about her, oh my gosh, I mean, she was involved in the Wolf case, and Wolf is the guy that took uh, highly classified information 
from the Senate um, intelligence, the top eight guys, I forget the actual name of the group. S- the that, Senate Intelligence Committee. Yeah, the Senate Intelligence Committee. That's where Warner, Burr, yeah. Devin Nunes, Feinstein, Shifty Schiff is in there. And I think there's a couple more, but there's eight of them. Anyway, this guy took, he was one of the sergeant of arms with all the government uh, classified materials. And he took some classified information about the FISA and gave it to some girl. uh, Who he was uh, sleeping. Wait, who, wait. Yeah. A a woman reporter from the Washington Post who he was sleeping with. Yeah. Some young girl. She was foolish to think that's a way of getting a document, but she did it. And he got caught, and this Jesse Liu, this attorney general, who was almost number three at the DOJ under Barr, she only put this guy in jail for two months. I mean, the highly classified information he was taking from that office and giving it to his girlfriend. This is insane. And, and Jesse Liu was also in charge of General Manafort Flynn's case, brother. Manafort's case, Stone's oh, case. case. She she gave Stone's a pass case. to the Iwan brothers. Yep, yep, yep. The Iwan brothers who hacked everybody's server and, you know, all the DNC servers. So it's a mess. And um, thank but, God. But President, so she she got moved out of Justice Department yeah. by Barr to put this shay in. Because she she was going to get it. yeah she was going to get this Treasury Department job where she had to go in front of the Senate yeah and a number of us were funneling information for questions about her yeah yeah and then all of a sudden uh, her uh, her hearing was supposed to be Thursday today? February thirteenth and on Tuesday today. night right Tuesday night President Trump already he pulled her nomination Thank God. no hearing Thank God. And, oh and by the way there's no job for you back at Justice. I know. Thank God. And well, sorry. I think uh, he left today. I don't know. I and, hope so. And, and and another prosecutor that was on the case, Deborah Curtis, all of a sudden on September eighteenth, twenty nineteen, all of a sudden just took a powder and left the Department of Justice after it too. came out that she disappeared she, too. Yeah, right. After it came out through investigative journalists Mary Fanning and Alan Jones that she was the one who had received information about illegal surveillance back in twenty fifteen, yeah. and had deep sixed it on behalf of helping out Comey. I know. Oh my oh, God. Oh. So, so yeah. I mean, so we, so when we, when everybody, when, when we just saw yeah we saw the four day. prosecutors leave Stone's case right and, and yeah, everybody's yeah. like well oh, oh, I, wow that's really rare no it's not Look, well Deborah it's a, Curtis it's a, it's a, Lou, it's a, all, I call it the I call it the Mueller um uh the Mueller mutiny the Mueller coup team mutiny they're 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 jumping ship right now but. It's scary because President Trump really needs our help right now. He needs yep. all of us to support him so much right now because look at what they're doing. The whole fake news media is spinning out of control about, you know, A.G. Barr needs to be resigned or recused. or I mean, they want to impeach him. I mean, I heard Warner, Warren and Pelosi. I mean, these people are absolutely insane. And the fake news media is going along with it. So that's why President Trump needs us to stand with him and keep giving him our comfort and support and our voice. Our voices are are mattering right now. And our vote, of course, our vote. But the DOJ needs a complete overhaul. We can see that now. Nobody ever wants to go through this. I, I pray no other family ever, ever, ever goes through what we've been through. And no, ever pre- no other president can ever go through what we're going through right now with our president. It just can't happen. And of course, no other you know military hero general who dedicated his life could ever go through anything like this. But these guys, it was, it, they were the, they're the greatest guys that could ever be in this position right now. They're the strongest guys that could have ever held up. And, you know, and I, and I know I can't wait for the day that uh, Trump and Mike can have a great conversation and some share some laughs again about all this. And this is all, you know, because Mike is his loyal soldier to the end. There is nothing they did. They got nothing out of General Mike. You know, listening, reading that memorandum to you guys, I'm thinking, you know, they were trying to get Mike to say something. And then the news was going crazy at the time thinking, you know, Flynn's going to give him up. It's like, no way. They're talking, you know, we, we, you know, they, they were messing with the wrong guy completely. They well, had no idea. Not, just, not just the wrong guy. 
wrong the wrong sister, the wrong family, <laughs> and the wrong attorney in Sydney Powell. You know, yeah. Barb, oh I, I uh, you, your, your family has been persecuted and have become pr political prisoners for well over three years. And yeah, I don't know, I don't know of another family. Uh, well, the Trump family, but, but, yeah. but, oh, yeah. but, uh, I, I don't. I, I know very few families that have could have withstood, not, not just withstood the pressure, but 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 actually fought back on behalf of not just your family, not just General Mike, but of every American, our country, and the Constitution. And I'd like to thank you oh, uh, for thank everything you. that you have done, everything your family has done, are doing, and will do, as well as Sidney Powell, because well, I you. believe I believe that this, this case is going to break the deep state in half. And this yes. is what's going to lead to the implosion of their reign of terror that they have inflicted on our country for decades. Yeah, I know what, we, you know, this is, it is coming to a colossal end here soon, you know, guys. So we're all just in the, you know, we're, we're, I can't, say thank you enough to everybody and when i get to talk like this it's uh, my family is listening too they'll they listen to every every time one of us speaks you know on on a show um and sydney listens we're all listening and it's and so my voice you know what what i say sometimes is not what mike's thinking <laughs> what general mike's thinking but you know it's from all of our, us to you guys just saying you know thank you so much for everything you guys have done and uh, all the wonderful people out there, the researchers, oh my God, there's so many, you know, uh, I call them digital soldiers, like Mike is the one that started that, uh, but there's so many people, I, I, I always forget and think I'm going to, you know, leave a name off, so I try not to mention too many, but uh, you know you know who they are, if you, if you follow on Twitter, and you don't have to have a Twitter account to... No. Follow somebody on Twitter. You could just like look up Barbara Redgate on Twitter, and I think you can read all the messages. I think that's what my and, uh, my and all the is. and all the documentation as you mentioned earlier, Barbara on Sydney Powell S I D N E Y Sydney Powell dot com. Barb, I'd like to thank you for everything you have done, thank are you. doing, and will do, folks. Thank you for joining us today. Until next time, Dave Janda signing off. Dream big and dare to fail. God thank you for your you time guys. today, and network this information to anyone and everyone you know. Thanks for joining us.